Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Popcorn Watch List podcast, where we have fun talk about our favorites in TV and film. I am your host, Xavier, and join with me are Anthony, Danny, and Zach, and we are here to get down to business, to defeat the Huns. No, I'm kidding. We're actually here talking about the Oscars. So nominations just went out a few days ago from when we're recording this episode, and like every year the four of us are pretty much hyped for everything that we have uh seen go up some surprises some key snubs but uh really exciting to see the wide variety of nominations that went out this year um so without further ado i figured we just go right into it gentlemen uh starting with uh a category that uh is always near and dear to us uh best score so, Danny, go ahead and read out uh, the best original score nominees for us. Yeah, so we got All Quiet on the Western Front. We got Babylon. We got The Banshees of Inisherin. Everything Everywhere All at Once. And The Fablemans. Wild to see that. Not wild, but at least think of it as like if John Williams comes up with something pretty strong, especially if it's paired with Steven Spielberg, it's like automatic. automatic. Exactly, just automatic nomination. Uh, but uh, I know Zach, you really liked the Banshees of Inisherin. Like, what do you remember specifically from the mood that the score brought up? So, I mean, mood wise, like, like it, it would have this. Uh, I don't know if this would be the right word. Um, like, a, in in some instances, like an eerie or somber kind of feel. Like, especially the more darker and dramatic parts. Um, but the score in general, I, I kind of actually don't really remember all too well because I was more focused on the film itself than the than on the music, which is something rare for me because I always think music is like like a secondary character for a movie. But I would I would say yeah, like in some cases eerie somber, um, but then the more upbeat parts like towards the beginning, it was like from what I remember a little upbeat more or less. Now I don't know if if it would be. Uh, you know, a shoe in for for win or like you know if it would win the category. Um, I mean, I've only seen this is the only movie of the category that I've seen. Um, I'm not sure how the other ones would be like All Quiet or The Fablemans. Uh, I will watch All Quiet on the Western Front tomorrow, so I'll, I'll see how that is and then kind of compare. But I don't know. What, what do you guys think would win? I mean, if you go by the Golden Globes, I mean, this is a rule that Anthony's normally seen. Is uh, you see Justin Horowitz on there, it's probably gonna be a uh, a key win, right? Did did was he in the Golden Globes? Uh, he won the Golden Globe for okay. Babylon. Oh uh, well, I, that was just gonna be my pick, just because I haven't even seen the movie, but just the fact that he did the music for La La Land, and he seems like Damien Chazelle's guy for his movies. Did he also do the music for Whiplash or no? Probably. I believe he did. And he probably did the music for Last. Uh, not first man. First man. Yeah, not last man. Last, <laughs> last first man. Last first man. But yeah, I mean, I love the music for La La Land, and I'm just assuming that this is going to be that, like, times 10, because I, I seem like there's a lot of jazz influence. Yep, you were right. Just, just, Justin Hurwitz was doing with Lash. Yeah, so that that would just be my pick. Um, also because, you know, we're, we're still, like, two months away from the Oscars, so all of us here haven't seen all these movies yet we've seen a good amount of them so these next two months we're gonna be catching up so that by the time the oscars come up we can you know make uh our decisions on what we think will win later on but yeah so now this is kind of just like us doing you know what we feel might win but i'm just gonna go on record and say how is our boy <laughs> michael giacchino who did like 20 scores last year <laughs> <laughs> he, not not one. even one. Not, not even one. it's the Batman. Like not even one, which is surprising. But you know, I guess because being prolific, he, sometimes he did, doesn't get. He did a couple comic book movies and Buzz Lightyear. He did a bunch of movies that I guess normally aren't the ones that are picked necessarily for. Directed Oscars. a short film in the meantime, what and he the did hell? the music for that too. He did the music for and World the by music Night? for Warble Night was cool too. So, anyways. That snub aside, I think the other snub, maybe you guys will agree, would be 
Hans Zimmer, Lauren Belf, and Lady Gaga for Top Gun. Absolutely. That music was awesome, and I definitely think it should have been on here. Even if it wouldn't win, I think it definitely should have been recognized and nominated. But long story long, uh, yeah, I would pick Babylon because I haven't seen All Quiet on the Western Front yet. I've seen Banshees. I couldn't tell you. The music, I don't remember the music. I just remember moody, moody somberness and sometimes a little eerie, especially that old lady. Melancholy music. So. <laughs> like in the beginning, it was a little comical, yeah. but then it just goes to eerie. Yeah, it and takes like, a dark turn. And I'm going to just... assume Fablemans is good just because it's John Williams. I'm going to see that soon. That's a strong assumption, but Every, yeah, yeah, I would say that too. And everything ever all at once, uh, I really like the movie, and I do remember the music to that movie. So I, I wouldn't mind if that one won, but I'm, I'm going to go for Babylon. So... That's, that's a good pick. That's Anthony's safe bet. That's okay. I feel like that. Danny, any thoughts before we move on? Um, no, I just need to see uh, All Quiet on the Western Front because I'm curious yeah, to I've, see I've what that good. score is like. For a war movie? Yeah. It might be good. Yeah. So. War movies tend to have really strong scores, whether mm-hmm. if it's lamenting the you know, horrors of war or... You know, heroes in dark times, that kind of thing. They're yeah. usually pretty inspiring. Yeah. Like 1917 was good too. Mm-hmm. That's right. Who that did the one. score for that for Sam Mendes? Like, oh, I, I do not recall. Maybe it was the Splat. <laughs> My <laughs> favorite guy. <laughs> you know what? No, that's uh. I'm re- for Sam Mendes, what? <laughs> Who did the music for the Bond movies that he worked on, aside from the most recent one? Because that was uh, Zim- Thomas Newman okay. did the score for that. So yeah, he, oh, he's re- he's Randy Newman's like cousin or something. <laughs> what? I think so. N- no. Yeah. His his father was notable film score composer Alfred Newman. I almost said a spoiler, but I refrained, so I'm not going to say it. Are... spoiler of what? It doesn't. I oh, won't say it. Oh my god! I won't say it. I won't yeah, say it. guys, because for the record, Zach's the only one who hasn't seen everything ever all at once. Yeah. Um, if you're listening to this and you've seen that movie, you know exactly what we're talking. Maybe you actually don't know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's a it's a deep but, uh, cut. We'll, yeah. we'll, re- we'll reveal okay, yeah. it. He is in the our cousin. Next episode. Yeah, he is the cousin, cousin of, Randy of Randy Newman. For Toy Story, <laughs> for people. Wonder. Sorry, that's something in my throat. Um, <laughs> all right, so this that will be an exciting one to watch. That'll right. be really cool. Yeah, well, I'm gonna watch it tomorrow to see how that sounds, and maybe I'll, I'll have more informed. Time. Yeah, have nice. a more informed decision on it. Good call. Good call. All right, uh, moving on to the next one. Let's go into cinematography because there are some very strong ones in here that um, you know that we got some good a good list, but I feel that there may have been a snub or two. Uh, we are looking at okay, guys. All right, so yeah, that's the one snub. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, All quiet on the Western Front. Just thinking that Bardo, False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths. That's an Iñárritu film. Uh, Elvis. This is an inter- interesting pick. Empire of Light. Uh, Roger Deakins, and then Tar as well. So we have we have quite a few dramas on here, but for best cinematography, uh, as opposed to you know you know anyway like you know the definition of what you would see is a good cinematography is like you know you're establishing the shots and you're able to really put stuff in frame um you know i there's these are strong films especially with the impact that all quiet on the western front has had um tar being this very interesting kind of drama with uh cape manchette so uh and then empire of light is the one that's very interesting to me that um it's the olivia coleman film but um you know, Elvis... But Roger Deakins is a... He's a goat. He is. He's one of the goats. This is true. So it's it's probably like one of those where, oh, John Williams did the score, nominate Roger him. Deakins. Roger Deakins did the cinematography, nominate well, him. Empire of Light was directed by Sam Mendes. There we go. Cool. There we go. There's... Uh, we all tied it everyone. together. <laughs> you're seeing, a, you're seeing a, a thread, right? Yeah. So um, th- these are, you know, strong dramas, but... Uh, from my little humming tune, Zach here is fuming, same as Anthony. Um, make your case for really, Top Gun Maverick, gentlemen. Really well shot. I don't know how that's not even. See, it, it, Are they mad because they're like, oh, you just took a camera on a plane? Like, is that? <laughs> like, and on a so real Was that the reason? So, like, so in that case, you're making it more for film editing as opposed to cinematography. But even the shots well, of like, like. I don't uh, think it's nominated for editing either. 
which is crazy because of the no, 800. it is. It is, is. It? Okay, it good. It most certainly Okay, is. we'll get there then. Come on. Okay. Film editing. You're like, okay, yeah. I'll my thoughts. The 800 yeah. hours of editing at the head. We'll get, we'll get there next. It, That's our next category. It makes me wonder why a lot of the, like every category except for best picture only has five instead of ten. take even longer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they need to narrow it Come down. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Have five. There's only so Remember, much ad time. Best picture had five until 2008. And mm. they because there was ten. enough complaints that Dark Knight should have been nominated, and it wasn't. And after that yeah. year, they added ten. Yeah. Yup. Uh, that they they yep. literally said that Dark Knight would have been number six on the list, but because wow. they could only put five, it wasn't even nominated. So that's depressing. It is pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's also pretty sad is no love for the Northman for cinematography. The, right. Nothing. That movie looked beautiful. I oh, yeah, ma- like that. Yeah. I'm actually like upset. That's that's the one snub. Like I had no nominations for anything, which I get. But at least for if you're gonna nominate for something like cinematography, or, or like to me that score is more memorable than, uh, let's say like even for me like everything ever all at once, like because like it had some like you know movie establishing stuff and some so the big emotional Definitely stuff more than Banshees at least uh, to me. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. But you know. That hurts. Uh, we here at the Popcorn Watch List uh, have love for the Northman, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, I'm, in, I'm also surprised. I haven't seen it yet, but just from the trailers, the Fablemans looked like it was shot very well. And so I'm surprised that that's not nominated either, considering it's Spielberg has multiple nominations. And yeah. Spielberg. Spielberg's I'm not sure who there. did the who was a DP on that film. But uh, yeah, that's another surprise. Indeed. Elvis. It was a good movie. Oh, cinematography? I yeah. forgot. Another snub. Nope. Nope had nope. some it had some great really shows. great like those outdoor shots. Uh the you know, just out like on the, the kind of like the plains in the mountains. I think that you know it's part of California. And uh there's some really creepy establishing shots, uh film editing, and then they, they got to just recreate the Akira slide. Yeah. That's yeah. probably why they're like, oh we didn't like, like that. Yeah, you know, that's for babies. <laughs> Whatever, man. Yeah, I think that that's a snub for sure. Um but hey, uh those are the best for cinematography based off of this list. What do you guys think? What do you think wins this? I don't know. It's tough because most of these I haven't really seen I haven't seen any I've seen I've seen Elvis. And I've Danny, seen Elvis Danny, as well. and, and, I, and to me I feel like I like I like the movie, but most likely Elvis is probably the one that may not belong on this list that they could have put something else. Um, but yeah. And Tar, I'm going to be watching soon just because it's now on Peacock. So oh, we could try nice. to all watch that. I got to get on that too. I am, I'm I'm going to assume All Quiet on Western Front probably looks great. And I've heard just because it's a war movie and especially it's a World War One movie. So I'm sure they had to make it look like a World War One movie. So I don't know. Yeah, Roger Deakins is also a G, so, so. even though that's just a like a, a drama, but somehow he made a drama look really nice. That's the dude, man. That's the dude. All right. Uh, so we go from cinematography. Bar- Bardo might win because that's the I think that's the only category it's in. So Bardo just might win. <laughs> You'd be mm, maybe. I mean, if if you think the the voters, Academy voters, would see this like, oh yeah, this needs to be nominated for this, or it needs to win something, so they just. Well, so in case our viewers or listeners don't know, each category of the Academy has what, like seven or eight thousand members in each category. The members of who work in that category are the ones who vote for that category. So it's not like all eight thousand vote for the cinematographer. It's the cinematographers that are in the Academy Academy. vote for the cinematographer. So that means the cinematographers all were impressed by Bardo. And that's the only one. That's the only category it's in. So it's very possible that they, they just they just might say like, yeah, this movie looked amazing. So is that how they decide the um, only like the, the only nomination? Yeah, the only like, movie where everyone in the academy picks is for best movie. Yeah, but all the other categories, it's those individual only sectors. directors. So yes. only directors vote for best director. Only uh, the actors vote for best actors, and, and so forth. So then let, let's say like you have an academy member who's like a because like I, I'm assuming if you're what, like if you're a double, triple threat? Like if you do multiple things? No, no, like let's say if uh, if there's a... Like for those that nominate for Best Director, mm-hmm. those Academy members can be directors of movies, right? No, no, that's who that's who do the nominations. They're the ones who, who pick who gets nominated. And then out of... Let's say they're out of the 8,000 people, there's 
800 directors and those 800 directors look at whatever movies and they all vote for what they feel are best and then they do the top five of that are and there any sort of, are there any current like directors that we know of that are kind of i'm sure that? there's plenty that we know because right would it be would it be uh like like um, uh, almost certain Spielberg is the part of that. List. Yeah, well, I was gonna say like, is it a <laughs> he votes for himself? Of course he would. I'm yeah. sure he would vote for himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure he would. But who knows? It's like knows? it's like everyone except for the person involved in any of these movies can. Not I mean, I don't know like that much, like the minutia, but I just know that. Because I, I think that would each, be a conflict of interest. In each category like, votes for their category. Yeah. Like, until okay. until it gets the best movie. So the more you know. There you go. But that's nice. a lot of academy. I mean, for eight thousand. I mean, small, yeah. but also a lot of people. Well, I think I think Golden like Globes had like seventy people at one point, and that's why there was this big controversy because they're like, out of those seventy or hundred people that are in the Golden Globes. Like all of them are old white guys or something. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like, I'm voting for what are you? I know. Yeah, with that accent too. Anyway, uh, speaking of what we know, uh, going into film editing, uh, next up is uh, we got a couple movies I think a lot of us have seen here. So, Banshees of Inisherin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun. Top said, Gun. It's editing, like, right? You said editing. That's editing. Ooh. If, 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 anyone, if any one of these movies is going to steal it, it's going to probably be, it should be everything ever all at once, but it no. probably will be the Banshees of Finisher. I haven't no. seen it, but I, I think, think Elvis will do it. No, well, maybe because they had some all crazy those editing. montages. Yeah, the montages are crazy. All those montages and like Elvis is sort of like comeback Christmas thing. Like that was, that was. That and then everything everywhere really. all at once. That was movie just is like too crazy. But, to but that's just, what I'm saying. That movie is like editing. It's, the movie like, yeah. yeah like you have to do that the proper way like, <laughs> kind of like what was the, the Andrew Zach, Garfield you know what you're movie missing, man. the Andrew Garfield movie that came out a few years ago the no it was like last year actually was it last oh, year the tick, yeah tick, 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 boom. boom that oh, movie yeah. was like editing the yeah, movie yeah editing the movie because um, I mean I, I watched it and it was I, very I good can't editing. recall like like how crazy the editing would have been that editing was it was very good. Good. editing was extremely good huh. but uh I guess I just didn't notice I was focused on the movie but even then like like I was 90% paying attention yeah. Yeah, I think there was one part of like him and Vanessa Hudgens like going back and forth mm-hmm. and like some editing was going on through there and that was pretty cool. That was actually really good, yeah. I kind of remember that, yeah. Was, All right. Pretty cool. I think we talked about it last time. But yeah, I, don't, I, don't I haven't seen Tara, so I can't really say whether that one was a good editing, but... <laughs> Quick mention. Banshees. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was edited well, but you know, like you have to put those sequences together to get the right emotion. But uh, quickly, uh, slight backtrack. We talked about best original score. We need to talk about best original song. Oh, because there's really only two that are out here like that <laughs> might be able to take it. Because uh, as, as there might not, be as really three. nice as "Lift Me Up" is. Lift but, Me Up is a good song. Yeah, it is good. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, as good as a uh, uh, as "Hold, hold my, my Hand" is gonna hold, hold up to. Hand. The international, not to, not to, <laughs> tour de force. That is not to, not to. It's gonna be, it's gonna be played and sung. Hopefully, they do the whole oh. shebang. Yes, like you mentioned, I hope they do I'm the just whole excited shebang. to see it performed live. Yeah, I Did hope they have the like co- thirty people. I on want stage. the same choreographer yeah, yeah, yeah. in the movie to do it if they're for the Oscars. Yeah. That'd be baller. Just That'd have the great. actors come out too, like with their costumes. Could like you imagine if the, the actual actors went came in. They have to do it. They have to. That'd be amazing. Why wouldn't they? That they're part of the song. And then you'll get to hear Hold My Hand as well. Hold oh my hand. Everything will be okay. How, uh, I wonder how over the top Gaga will go. Or will she do she's, it very understated? No, she's going to go over the top. Oh boy. No, maybe like, maybe like understated in the sway, beginning yeah. and then over the top. No, yeah, once yeah, she gets yeah, to the oh, 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 like, oh, like, Once she gets to that part, she's going to. Every she's gonna, time. Um, that's the running joke. And then she's going to probably say, like, shallow out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> shallow. So, well, in the background. so which one of these then? Because, I mean, I, I would agree and be torn between Natsu Natsu and Hold My Hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be That's pretty solid. I'm calling it now. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it, it won the Golden Globe. Hold my so. Yeah. Who Wait, which one? Hold My Hand? No. no not not Natsu Natsu. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah it's. I came up and stole it like yeah. these guys locked eyes from across the bridge. <laughs> it's like, bam, it's time. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Watch RRR. <laughs> All right. All right Speaking of things to watch, let's get to one that's highly contentious in terms of like, it, I, in my opinion, being extremely stacked. Uh, 
this category normally is kind of just not, I don't want to say throwaway, but ever since the whole thing of Beauty and the Beast um, being nominated for Best Picture when it came out, uh, they decided to make its own category for uh, Best Animated Film. Mm -hmm. So for Best Animated Film, you have uh, The Sea Beast, which is on Netflix, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, also on Netflix. You have, which is a very interesting choice, even though I adore this film, which is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Uh, you have Puss, in, Puss Boots. in Boots, The Last Wish, which has really gotten this massive word of mouth. Um, that just, I, I was going to say, like, the uh, whole thing has, the movie almost has, like, nine lives in the theater. Yeah. Like, it's hilarious. And then you have... Um, Lastly, you have Turning Red. Turning Red, which I really... We've said this before, is that I truly wish this movie was in theaters. I think it would have made a much bigger impact. Big disservice for... for Absolutely. Uh, Pixar fans. Yeah, like... I don't know. For Pixar fans, it's just people who like films. Like, yeah. uh, Del Toro said it next uh, in... Um, you know, when he said it very nicely, when he won the Golden Globe speech, you're just like, animation is a medium for film. It's not just something that you just throw in front of a kid's face mm -hmm. and have him be entertained. Like, you, it's a way to tell stories. And so I think, especially th like this year, because there was a lot of backlash last year. They're just like, all right, here's stuff for your kids. And the way ABC presented it mm -hmm. was very, uh, was, was kind of like aiming at a particular demographic. Whereas instead, it should be like, hey, these are movies that anybody anybody should be able to watch like um we were just talking earlier the sea beast is pretty awesome and like i saw it yeah it's great like netflix not just for kids like we all enjoyed it and it was a shame that it was only on netflix like it should have come out in theaters as well it was it would have looked great in theaters just yeah. from a raw animation standpoint yeah netflix isn't really known for releasing movies in theaters i like, think they will they, now they've yeah they've released a few over the last few like years testing it. Uh, but like limited like one or two week releases and then straight to streaming i mean the That's strategy right. should be hey here's this out for two weeks oh you missed it give us money on our platform yeah it should be even longer than that i don't know why like like glass onion was one week yeah and they made pretty good amount of money for one week so it, they should have just left it for the month it made more money than a Netflix subscription yeah <laughs> Like, so like, and then it didn't go on Netflix for another month. So why didn't they just yeah. leave it for the leave whole it month? There. Yeah, like, it's so strange. I don't understand. So, but I think they after that movie, Avatar? no, I just think after that movie, I think now they're gonna their bigger to... movie releases. They're probably gonna start putting them longer in theaters. We'll see, man. Yeah, it'll make more money there anyway. Because yeah, yeah there, there's no reason for them to spend what two hundred yeah. million on Gray Man and not put it in theaters. And only make like you didn't make any one percent of that. Yeah. Oh, but we can recoup it over the course of the year no, through subscriptions. You no, no, you don't. I agree. Those people were losing, there already. Yeah, <laughs> they're losing people. Yeah. <laughs> so, but of these, I would say like Pinocchio. I think. Dude, Pinocchio is so good. Golden Globe. I I'm not even yet. going off the, the Golden Globe performance. I'm going off the fact that that movie's really good. I'm, yeah, I'm going based off of a claim. Like I, th I've heard so much about Pinocchio. It's that... very good, guys. It's very good. Um. It's uh, it's well, vo it's well. Uh, it, the voice acting is extremely strong. The the themes behind it are also really. It's it's a cool spin on it that the that the Toro and team did. It's um, yeah, a bit darker, but it's not crazy over the top dark. But it does deal with a couple heavier things that you wouldn't see in like a, the Disney's version of Pinocchio. So it's not the Pauly Shore Pinocchio that came out. Correct, because right. that is something else. I'm not even going to go into that. <laughs> if you guys don't know what that is, look that up. Or maybe don't. I don't know. There were three Pinocchio movies that came out last year. So Three Pinocchio look movies. Look them up. Guys. What was the third one? With Pauly Shore. <laughs> With Pauly Shore. Do you we'll, even know we'll who that up. is? We'll look it up after Do you this. even know who that is, Zach? Do you know who Pauly, Pauly Shore, Shore is? Not. My head hurts. <laughs> go watch Encino Man. I'm old. <laughs> my back. Let me go. Oh, crack my back. Not Spider-Man. Personally... <laughs> Um, man, yeah, I would say uh, Pinocchio, but like my in my like heart of hearts, I really want Marcel the Shell to win. But you know, like for it being mostly shot through stop motion, there is more, way more live action than what you normally expect from the others in the category. So it's really, it's really got a, a very slim chance of winning. So that case, yeah, um, 
Del Toro's Pinocchio, if not turning red. Yeah, you guys have seen more of these. For some, usually I see most. I of still these. want to watch Puss in seen, Boots. I've man. already seen Turning Red on this I list. I really want to see Puss in Boots, but you know, Danny, any uh, lasting bit? Um, I think I'm with you on this boat. Of like, I really want Marcel to, Marcel the Shell with shoes on to win. Um, but because the shoes are. But, <laughs> Are but too big. Shoes. The shoes are not on. No, yeah. the shoes are just great. You just gotta get a peanut butter and then climb up the wall. I walls. might choose um Pinocchio to get this one, but yeah. if Marcel wins, uh, I'll be super happy. Man, running on a clean. I feel like like stop motion films tend to not have win. Well, I was gonna say they tend to the Coraline win. win. No, it didn't. Right? No, because most of the time the Leica movies come out. It's like. Toy Story 4 or some you know, <laughs> Pixar movie. Troops. <laughs> okay, like, like, at the same it, time. You, you guys have to remember, one like Pixar that. usually dominates this. Like, like Disney did, usually dominates this category. Did Kobu? Kobu, right? Like, yeah. Kubo. Kubo. Kubo okay. on the two I, I always mix yeah, it up. Yeah, it didn't win, but I got nominated. It should have yeah. won. That movie was great. What, what did it lose to? I don't know. Was it I don't know. Like, this was, was like 10 movie? years ago or something like Danny, that. Danny, research while you pull that up. Because what movie would have, what Pixar movie would have come out? In 10 years ago 14 13. that was like the same year so like that was the year that uh so they're talking about what movie Finding that I got Dory, maybe I don't zootopia know. oh that movie's, okay that movie's really good that also <laughs> movie's really good yes. yeah yeah you can't yeah. you can't be mad at zootopia but the one that was mad about nominated? i was mad at disney for beating disney for the wrong movie <laughs> uh what? the year the, the that brave came out no oh. brave and big hero six Oh, oh, it should cool. have been Big Hero 6. Yeah. Big Hero 6 should have won. And they gave it to Brave? Yes, yes they gave it to Brave. What? Her, she, I mean, Pixar Mara is Brave extremely is... well animated. Yes. She's extremely well animated. A lot of the movies well animated, but... Yeah, you have to remember... I feel like story-wise... You have to remember, okay. animators voted for that. So they yeah. probably were like, the animation in that movie is crazy. Well, so that's probably how they voted. The Not not necessarily it's the best story, but they're like... The animation... The, 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 the text, they, like the technical... Right. Yeah, so you have, the that's, the, you, like, you have to look at it through their eyes. That they're looking at little details that we have no idea of what they're, talk, of what they're looking at. So. Yeah. Yes. The animation for 2017 was Kubo and the Two Strings, uh -huh. Zootopia, Moana... Oh, Jesus. My Life as a Zucchini, and The Red Turtle. I've like, so, never heard the so line. There's but, like, yeah. Moana, like, Moana didn't like, even win, so Kubo wasn't gonna true. win. Like three-way yeah. race. Yeah, that 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 it's was a three-way race. One. Like yeah, and Moana was the Pixar movie. No, right? Moana no, was it's Disney. Disney. Oh, it was the Disney, Disney one. Oh, it was Disney, Disney animation. animation. Yeah. Zootopia was also Disney animation. Yeah, there was no Disney. Pixar that year, right? I mean, no. there probably was. It just didn't get nominated. No. Well, I think Finding well, Dory had come out 2016 for 2017. I mean, they come out was that movie every year? Coco came out in 2017. And that so was came, for the twenty eight, but it was for the. Was for the so what movie came out before yeah. that? That oh, didn't like get nominated. I don't think they had to have a movie. Finding Dory. Oh, so yeah, there we go. So it didn't even get nominated. Yeah, no. It never got nominated. Didn't even get nominated. Because Moana and Zootopia were just that much yeah. better. But like, yeah, but Finding Dory <laughs> wasn't as wasn't better than the Zucchini movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, but I could be wrong. I haven't seen Damn, the Zucchini yeah, movie. The Zucchini yeah, movie yeah, maybe the Zucchini movie was amazing. <laughs> Anthony comes back, life changed. Yeah, I was like, guys, you guys need to watch the Zucchini movie. <laughs> it's like Veggie Tales so, on crack. <laughs> the team that made the Zucchini movie, sorry, <laughs> but we'll watch we'll it. We'll watch it. We'll watch it. I swear, we'll get to it. No shame. Okay. But that, that's pretty stuck. Yeah, that, that, the fact that Finding Dory didn't even get nominated yeah. is pretty. But that's what I'm saying. Now this year's animation is stacked and too. And Coco won, right, for the following yeah, year. Following yeah, following year. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, who's out of hand? And then your boy, because our boy made the score. Sto story wise, it was a, it was awesome. And but going just based on the animation, also it's crazy. Hand. Man, all right, I'm hyped for that. But uh, we're gonna pivot over. Nice. Let's let's get to the. Um, supporting actor and actress categories so let's start with supporting actor because this one is also they're crazy hella pretty, stacked pretty crazy i'm like this is kind of wild um my list loads thank you yeah so you have brendan gleason for banshees banshees of inisharan brian tyree henry for causeway uh that's an apple tv plus uh, exclusive mm. judd hirsch for the fablemans mm. You also have Barry Keegan for the Banshees of Inisherin, and then you have Kei Hui Kwan for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. He needs to win life. He needs to totally win. Well, right now, he has as been. good as 
as good as everyone else on that list is, like if Brian Tyree Henry came out of nowhere and won, I wouldn't, I'd only be slightly Did disappointed. Did you see that movie though, Cosway? I, no, it's on like it's third on my list to watch up next because apparently like his performance is really really good like acting alongside um i was gonna say taylor swift uh, on jennifer lawrence like it's I've, i'm hearing extremely good things so i have to give it a look but the rest of that list is nuts like uh judd hirsch has always been uh really stand out in a lot of the movies he's in but Brendan Gleeson and I'll, and I'm, you know your boy Barry Keegan is just it's just skyrocketing. The dude is is uh, is on the map for sure. But uh, coming out of nowhere, uh, uh, I honestly like the feel good story has to be for K Hui Kwan, and I really think he's gonna win it. I'm surprised that Brendan Gleeson isn't part of Best Actor with Colin Farrell. They're both the main characters. No, I think Colin Farrell, I think, is considered the, like, main, the main character. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're yeah, his delineated the same. that way, but it's yeah. kind of strange. That's how I felt when I was watching the movie. Anyway, because he's the main character, just like, I don't get it. This guy doesn't like me anymore. And, uh, you know, uh, he's going through extreme lengths to show that he doesn't like me anymore. Like, But when you compare Brandon Gleeson and Barry Keegan, Keon, or I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Keon, actually. I think I've heard it was that, but whatever, Keegan. Um, like, yeah, he did, not a, the same he did a great like, job, but Leeson was in it way more. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, like, yeah. they both did he was amazing as much as, but as Barry Tom Keegan Pearl. was a supporting character. Like, yeah. I feel like Brandon Leeson is too. like one and two with Colin yeah. Farrell. Yeah, yeah, but Barry whatever, was hilarious they, they did it like one. that. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty it's good class. Sorry, it's Cowan. Cowan? Wow. Yeah, even, Cowan? Even... Thanks, Ireland. But yeah, it's it, it's, <laughs> Cowan. it's Cowan. <laughs> I don't know. I want him to come out of nowhere and just like slap me upside the head and say, like, You're saying my name wrong. It's kind so, of like Sir Ronan, you know, like Cerise. Sor- Ralph Fiennes. Swarcy Ronan. <laughs> um, yeah, it's that I, category. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen Causeway. I've only, um, I've only seen Banshee. I've seen Banshee, so I know those two guys did great jobs. I've seen everything all at once. He yeah. did a great job because he plays multiple characters, multiple he versions plays, like, of himself. three versions of himself. Um, yeah. Dude, it's, he's too good. I've heard Judd Hurst in the film is as good, but he's barely in it. So it might be one of those... And uh, Hathaway situations? And Hathaway or Alec Baldwin where like, we're in one scene, but we like knocked it out of the park. And I got an Oscar for one amazing scene. Yeah, man. Um, I wonder if there's a requirement so we'll on like how long they have to be. In uh, apparently not. It might be like more than ten minutes, minutes or something. If like Judd Hurst ends up winning it, do we have to just not oblige to go back and just rewatch Independence Day? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's all I wanted to do. You listen to my son. <laughs> He's gonna say, "Oh my god!" Anyway, oh, they need to be in roll at least ten minutes or had three lines. Oh. Three lines. Okay. That's all Holy you need. Holy crap! Ten minutes. Three lines. No, three lines. It's and it's or or oh, I thought it was all. Oh, 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 <laughs> or ten, or imagine or having like a ten minute monologue. <laughs> I got both, and then that that's your that's your supporting actress nomination right there. So how could or actor nomination? Well, like Silence of the Lambs. Um, Anthony Hopkins wasn't in the movie for that long, but he mm-hmm. won, and people just know how good he was as Hannibal Lecter. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then we have another stacked cast. The supporting for, actress? The supporting actress. Oh, yeah. Read them out. Read them out. This is nuts. I think there's only one name you need to read out, but you can read out all of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why don't you read out the All right, get it, Anthony. So, best supporting actress, uh, Angela Bassett for Black Panther. Angela Bassett for Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Bassett for Black Panther. Angela Bassett for Black Panther. Oh, and uh, What's the last Stephanie one? Sue for uh, everything ever all at once. No, it says Angeli, Angeli, <laughs> Angela no! Bassett, Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee, no! Angela Bassett for Black Panther, <laughs> Jamie Lee Bassett, and uh, uh, Angela Condon for the Banshees of Black Panther. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, no. really though, like everyone here did a great job, except I, I didn't see the whale yet, but Dude, I've seen nuts. But I've seen all the other ones and. They were all great. The, you know, the, you know that's, she, that's the sister from Banshees, right? Yes. She, yeah, 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 she was, she was awesome. awesome. She was awesome. Okay, so uh, do you remember Jamie Watchmen? Lee Curtis was that's the Hong Chao was uh, this this chick uh, the the billionaire what uh, scientist. And no, in, in the Watchmen show, 
The Watchmen show? Oh, yeah, okay. that's Hong Chao. Oh, okay. Like, she's extremely good in The Whale. Like, extremely good. There's so many, there's so many, like, subtlety nuances and, and range. And, uh, the, dude, she was, re- I was surprised. When I remember seeing Hong Chao's name, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's, that's a big, big step. And then, you know, Zach and I went and watched The Whale. And, uh, yeah, that nomination's well-deserved. Uh, Angela Bassett was awesome in Black Panther. Dude, and she, she won awesome. the Golden Globe. Yeah, but, uh, and I think she deserves it. Um, I mean, but yeah, they're all good. Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, she was hilarious. She yeah, she was funny. She also played multiple characters. Yeah. There was emotional range in, in a lot of her stuff too. She was mm-hmm. a little terrifying in some scenes. The sec- yep. yeah, but the section yeah, that's true. But the section <laughs> uh, in like in the laundromat, like the, that was the fingers. That was something. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> say no more. Uh, I won't. I won't. I won't. Uh, <laughs> but Stephanie Steph- Sue. She was great. Like I, I, she like she got Jopaki. She got snubbed in some of the other um, award shows. Award shows, uh, but I'm glad she actually got nominated. I mean, she may not win, but she probably played more characters and, or maybe just as much as, uh, as uh, oh my god, forgetting her name, the main character of the, of the movie. Uh, you're ta- well. Oh, Evelyn, or you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, yes. Why, <laughs> why can't I think of her name? Oh my goodness! Come on, man. we all blanked out. You all blanked out. Um, you're not helping me, so I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to help you. No, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you go. No, you're on. looking at it right now. I'm not looking at it. Yes, you are. I am looking at it, <laughs> but I want you to know that I'm not looking at it anymore. Anyways, I'll just scroll and then I'll. It's look Michelle at Yeoh. It. Yeah, Come Michelle on, Yeoh. Come yeah, on, she did probably just as many characters as Michelle Yeoh, and she did a great job. Dude, that was nice. That's her daughter. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really they, they created that core foundation of what's going on in the movie. So uh, it's pretty telling when like oof. all the main characters of that movie are all nominated. Uh, it's pretty pretty crazy. So hopefully at least one of them wins or more. Gosh, but let's, we'll hope see. One of them let's hope so, man. But yeah, I think Angela Bassett takes it though. Okay, she was yep. she was good. All right, whatever you thought about Black Panther, the first trailer of that movie was Ooh. amazing and the only words spoken in that trailer were like angela the bassett lines of angela bassett and that and even the whole amazing. opening like first 10 15 minutes yeah, she's she bamf. absolutely like if you need to know like who's running running things who the boss she the boss, she the boss. now we switch over to best leads all right so we want to do best lead uh actress ladies first uh, let's do yep. best lead actress yeah uh, so we have Kate Blanchett for Tar, which I've heard she's everybody's strong. saying that she's just like she's gonna win. Mm. A lot of nuts. people are saying that. Um, I think uh, you think she wins it over. Well, because the, the interesting nomination is Anna de Armas. I, I would love Michelle Yeoh to win, but it's a pretty stacked category. Well, I think Anna de Armas is there as like a, like yeah, the movies whatever, but like she's hey, you good. are that good and well, elevating well, the film. She's there because actresses voted her there. Yeah. So that's how good she is. That that's good. the movie itself, people are either they like it or they don't. But they all said like, but she was ridiculous. Yep. So that's why she's there. Some people may be like, why is she there if the movie's so controversial? It's like because she, she did a yeah, hell of a job. Did, uh, yeah, good. She did a hell of a job. Are there different uh people for the Academy groups for like for those that were supporting actresses in movies their whole career? Uh, I'm assuming I think, actors, yeah, I think actors, it's just actors, actors, actors in general. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Say, like, <laughs> all of us. Yeah. Strange. yeah. <laughs> Poor Zach. All of us jumped on. It's like it's just all actors. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking here, like an actor's an actor's so an actor. <laughs> going down. Then you you have Michelle Williams for the Fablemans, which is a, a strong nomination there. Uh, Michelle Yeoh. This is the one that I think is like the crowd favorite between either the the general masses and also three of us here on that uh, help uh, on this. Podcast. But we haven't seen Tar yet. But we haven't seen Tar yet. <laughs> Thanks, Peacock. No, I get, Danny will probably watch this first. I think it's, they're it. gonna put it back in theater, so I might go. But then um, the dark horse was uh, Andrea Riceboro for to Leslie. For to Leslie. Yeah, like that was that came out of nowhere. Nowhere. Like, but that means now you're going nowhere, Bone Song. But exactly. yeah. So, um, that's an interesting take. Like, if you really, if this Cape Blanchett really is this, like, totally super strong tour de force, um, you know, let's see. Like, I just, I, I want to see it so I can really make that big connection. But, like, based off of what I've, what I've seen so far, man, like, Michelle Yeoh, like, it's, it's her time. 
I, that, that, I, but that's just my personal favorite. Yeah, I mean, Kate Blanchett might be the favorite, but she's won an Oscar already. So I feel like... Has she won like two? Yeah, I think she's won two. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Michelle Yeoh, like this was like such like a... It's a perfect, Yeah, it's like such a perfect role for her. And she was able to showcase more than just her her fighting ability or her martial arts background. She, but in, it's, in the movie, it's, it's in the movie, but she also was able to do so much more. I think emotional depth. Guys. Yeah. I think she did a great I think, job. Uh, yeah. I think like, although like they put Cape Blanchett there, I don't know. I think voters may just put it over for Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. It might be one of those random cases where, uh, like the vote <laughs> splits where people voted for, for Cape Blanchett or Michelle Yeoh. And it's like, you them win. So boom. And Adarmus, like out of nowhere, like that's it, it, sometimes that happens. Long shot where the where the vote splits, and so the other yeah. like a third the the dark horse wins. Yeah, long shot, but who knows? Um, uh, not many people know or have seen Two Leslie. I know I haven't. Um, I was watching an online show the other day where this guy said that the uh, Two Leslie was excellent, or that she was excellent in that movie. I don't and doubt it. Yeah. Clearly, other actresses thought so too because she's nominated. So you never know; she could be the dark horse. It's true. So it this, this this is like secretly stacked, even though so many people are saying that Kate Blanchett has in the bag. So I don't know. We'll yep. see. I I still gotta watch Star <sighs> and Fablemans. The Fablemanis, yeah. But Michelle Williams is usually good. She's always good. Yeah. Now speaking of always good, uh, you've got a couple of uh, like hey. Heavy like people you've seen here before, and but a lot of newcomers. Um, so you have like Austin Butler. Oh, sorry, we're going for best, best lead, lead actor. actor. Got ahead of myself here. I got way too excited. But best lead actor, you have Austin Butler for Elvis, uh, Colin Farrell for Banshees of Inisherin, Brendan Fraser for mm-hmm. The Whale, Paul Mescal for After Sun, and then Bill Nye for Living. Um, I'll start with at the end of that list for Bill Nye. I think Living. If I'm not mistaken, is like a sort of a remake of like a Kurosawa film, mm. and though apparently like he's extremely good in this. Um, but everybody like all the small screenings I've seen, it's like you need to see this for Bill Nye, you need to see this for Bill Nye, and it's um, it, it, I'm I'm honestly I, I'm happy I'm so happy for him that like David you know Jones there's more you know acclaim that he's getting. So, um, man, like I, that's that one, and obviously we've mentioned Tar. Um, those are those are my two like I need to see in order to get like the full like a, a good take on what's going to be for the Oscars what do you guys think I mean I, I've said it before in the podcast that I didn't enjoy Elvis as much as many people did um, but I would give that Austin Butler did excellent as Elvis so Mm-hmm. Like spot on, like you could see it was like him. It sounded like him. He even sang, like mm-hmm. really sang, not like voiceover or anything like that. So, um, I, I I think he he knocked it out of the park on Elvis. He did so well that he still sounds like he Elvis. still he still has that voice. <laughs> he, he went so method <laughs> and how he like trained to sound like Elvis that. He hasn't been able to revert back to his normal voice, so he, he still sounds Elvis like Elvis. Though. And like I, he even like acknowledges it. He's just like, "Yeah, man, like I'm, I'm still here. Like I'm still sounding like we're it." Gonna, but, we're gonna, we're gonna be getting Elvis in Dune too. Yeah. <laughs> so is he gonna have to like, like re like? So he's gonna like double act. He has to double act and like create another voice for his character. In I Dune. think so. Which again is a testament to his acting. Uh huh. So <laughs> good for him. He's like, I can't sound like Austin Butler, and I can't sound like Elvis. I have to sound like whatever character he's playing in Dune. Fade Rafa. That's going to be cool. Anyway. Because um, I think uh, well, yeah. for, for uh, Austin Butler, I haven't seen Elvis yet, but it is on my it is on my list to watch. It's on HBO, right? It yep. is on HBO. Yeah, and it's I, also I, back I in theaters. I think they brought it back to theaters. So. I think I'll probably watch it from home. Uh, I, I think everything ever all at once is something that I should watch in theaters for sure. Oh, yes. I <coughs> A-list. Oh, jeez. <laughs> A-list, baby. <laughs> I hope it, it is included, right? Of course, yeah, it, is. it absolutely Good. is. Good. All right, because so, it was funny seeing his career kind of from like being on Nickelodeon and Disney, or whatever, and then now him being yeah, like the, like the king of rock. Yeah. Shannara Chronicles, right? He was Shinar- Shinar- yeah, I saw that, and you know, go past season two, but probably for the best. But uh, good for Austin Butler. Now his career, he's 
A-list, baby. And my personal pick would probably be Brendan Fraser. I was gonna say, let's talk about the whale. In the I room. would probably pick it, and I haven't yeah. seen it yet. Dude, I haven't seen it. I just, I feel like, just, dude, dude. kind of like what we're dude. talking about with Michelle Yeoh. I feel like that and uh, <laughs> Kehu Kwan. That like that's the comeback story for a best actor would be yes. Him. But like, it's not he, just he got shut out of Hollywood for like so many years, and then like he slowly has been coming back, like yeah. with Doom Patrol and other smaller mm-hmm. roles. And the thing is, it's not just for like you know like either pity or like oh you're in mood again. You have like a no. fan. No, I've heard He's he does an amazing, legitimately amazing performance in yes. this movie. Yes. It is so good. Yes. Ah, uh, like everything comes together as a, as we talk about showcases for these actors and. This is an amazing showcase for Brendan Fraser. Like, there are some things that he did in that movie that you can't just, like, act it. Like, that's stuff that you build from life experience, and you put that into the work, and it just connects with you on a deep level. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know, you know, Zach and I, we watched The Whale very recently, and we were floored by how incredible he was. Everyone in the movie is great. Like, even, like, uh, Sadie Sink, you know, Hong Chao is uh, nominated... But uh, you have a uh, Ty Simpkin, was it that his name? Uh, the kid from Iron Man Three. Yeah. He's all grown up and oh, in that geez. movie. <laughs> yeah, because it, it took me like like the second time that he shows up, and I'm like, I'm he like, pulled you know, a that's he the pulled a Bobby. Iron. He's like, it's that guy from Iron Man Three. No, like it was <laughs> like kid super quick. Kid that was in Endgame that nobody knew it was him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I knew it was him because I heard he was going to be in the movie. I didn't know it was him. I, I was like, was who's him. this random person like, oh. in the back? <laughs> like, I'm like, and I'm like, oh, oh he's older now. It's Riley. It's Harley from it's Harley. Iron Man 3. <laughs> anyway, like, yeah. Why is he at Look, uh, the that's, funeral? That's all I got to say is like I, the, the strong forerunner right here is Brendan Fraser. If I watch Living, I can then take a look at it, but it can probably be and Bill Nye. I don't know if any of us have seen After Sun, so we have no idea. I've never heard of yeah. that. is maybe he's like... Excellent. Wasn't he recently announced to be in some other movie like coming up? Marvel mm-hmm. movie or something like that? No. I think it was Marvel. DC. No, it was the movie where it takes 20 years. Oh, oh yes. 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 Okay, I, I thought there was something like that. So is it is that a continuation of boyhood? Is he just no, doing like... If he's no, going to call it manhood? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm sure it's, it's the same else. director, right? right. Link same later. director. And, um, Link later. What's funny Link. is that is... Uh, so technically, because he was born in Ireland, Paul Mescal is Irish. So you have two Irish actors for best in the running for best picture for best actor. Um, and then you know, it goes without saying, Colin Farrell is awesome in Banshees of Inisherin. Like he's, it was great. Like yeah. going through these weird stages of grief for this and, end of a friendship. And like, he's been winning a I lot of the awards. Cool. He has so been winning a lot. He might be the front runner just because well, he's of been momentum. Winning. Yeah, yeah. So it's very possible. And I. I didn't like. I know you guys really liked that movie. I I think I need to rewatch it, but I didn't like it as much as you guys. But I can't deny the performances, like yeah. Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, all, all of them that are nominated, and even even like his sister. Everyone was great. Yeah, Con- yeah. But yeah, everyone just for me, the movie was itself was a little. I don't know, it was a little yeah. strange to me. But. I feel like Colin Farrell would be a close second, but I think I think Brendan Fraser might take it uh, he i i that's my pick yeah that's my pick danny watch the whale it's really good i will watch you it. you watch whale or you no? whale, whale? I I whale. whale. <laughs> okay that was a terrible pun <laughs> going into something with a little more respect best director you got some strong you have uh some some new new guys uh and i don't think ruben oslin has ever been nominated for anything but this is a i think the out of nowhere not or come from like blindside pick, which is Triangle of Sadness. I remember seeing trailers for it. It looked kind of weird, nartsy fartsy. Uh, Most but, of these are as well. <laughs> well, like more so than others because like kind of European esque. But whatever. You have Todd Field for Tar, Steven Spielberg, the Goat for Fablemans. Uh, then you have the Daniel, so Daniel Kwan and Daniel Sh- uh, Shiner for Everything Everywhere All at Once, mm-hmm. which is a, that's you know, very surprising, but. Very cool that they're not. It's a yeah. It's a, a yeah. I'm I'm happy for them. That that's there. If they win it, that's awesome. But um, honestly, it's between uh, Spielberg and Martin McDonough. I think for Banshees of Inisherin, like it's but that that it comes down to a two a two person race. That's uh. I still gotta see Tar, <laughs> and then maybe I'll. I mean, yeah. out of all of us, I know Danny's like the most in like really wanting to watch Tar. No, I want to uh, see it because if that's like. If she's the front runner and everyone's saying, "Oh, she's like a lock, she's gonna win it," then it's like I have to it's see it to see her crazy she's performance. A straight up like a lock, but 
All right, yeah, that's uh, until I see it. I I can't. I don't know if I can. Uh, yeah, I honestly, I don't have a because I think opinion. for the Golden Globes since they split the categories, Michelle Yeoh won because she was part of the musical. Musical. And I think Kate Blanchett won drama. for the drama. So so yeah, that's gonna be a it's a tight race. And then that leads us to, to best picture. Who'd you guys pick? You picked who? I'm picking. As much as I want, like Spielberg to win, or honestly, like deep down, the Daniels would be cool if they won. But I think it's like it's between Spielberg and McDonough. I think McDonough wins it. I, I think I'll I'm pick Spielberg. I haven't even seen it, but I'm gonna pick him. You know, I take that back. No, because I think it's it's. it's although the no, movie is like about him, and it's about movies and movie directing. So, so and that's <laughs> also, it's so like that's so meta, thing. and that's what's going. So, although you can have best director be for Martin McDonough, we're gonna go now to best picture. Um, and you know, a lot of times the Academy voters will just like vote for like, do we love Hollywood? Awesome. Like, let's do it. And then like all, everything goes and votes towards it, which that's where you would think like Babylon would go there, but Babylon's not even nominated. Anyway, uh, Danny, uh, hit us with those nomination nominees for those who don't have a list online. For best picture, we got All Quiet on the Western Front. Shh. Damn. <laughs> we got Avatar 2. The Way of Water. It's just Avatar The Way of Water. Yeah, Don't know, sully it I, with I, a I number. Said, I'm kidding. Papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting away with it. He's getting away with it. Papyrus. <laughs> He's going to get away with it for five movies. There's a, we're referencing an old SNL skit with Ryan Gosling. Gosling. With that he basically just is uh, living his life in disbelief because the avatar font is just papyrus <laughs> look it up everyone if you want to laugh it's hilarious are you okay yeah but did you ever watch avatar <laughs> you mean that movie yeah it's papyrus they're making another one he did it again <laughs> it's so good anyway uh, then we got the banshees of inna sharon mm-hmm. we got elvis baz lerman good for him everything everywhere all at once Woo. the fablemans tar top gun yeah <laughs> Triangle of Sadness and Women Talking. Hey, no, Francis McDormand was a producer on that. That's pretty good. I think good she's in it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah she, she's she for sure it. is in it. I know that. <laughs> but uh, interesting that yeah, like she's, she's in there. Um, so you know, I'm my interest or my curiosity is peaked for Triangle of Sadness. But um, you know, uh, with the exception of, I think. Um, yeah, a couple others like Fableman's All Quiet on the Western Front and Tar and like Women Talking, Triangle Sadness. Like we've seen half of these films, I think, between the four of us. Uh, I'm sure, not mistaken. Half I've seen, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah, I think I've seen half. I've seen three. Avatar, Banshees, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, Top Gun. So yeah. we'll, that's five. That's two, five. So three, yeah, four. I've seen half. And then we'll probably oh, watch six. Tar and No, that's five. I can't count. All Quiet and the Fable Men. I'll probably end up seeing like yeah. three more, four more out of these. In like the next weekend, yeah. Well, maybe over the, over the next couple months as the if couple you, months. You only have Academy to March seventeenth. If you guys want again, I don't know if they're gonna do it again, but sometimes they would split AMC would do their weekends of the best movie showcase. And since there's ten, they would probably split it within two weekends and show like five in a row in one day. Wow. Yeah, so you're at the theater all day, but you just sit watching Best Picture nominees. As Russell Crowe, so the gladiator it, yells, are you not entertained? If any of you are interested in that, look it up. They might be having that this year. If not, they're probably going to just re-release the movies and scattered a, throughout two months. And this is a special ticket, right, that you buy for that? Yeah, that yeah. you actually have to pay for. I yep. don't think A-List would help Does you out with that. that. Dang. It's like a... 40 or 50 dollar ticket and you watch all of them oh for like if it's a one day it's a one day one thing day. Five of them yeah, yeah you, it's yeah. a one day thing and i think it gives you also like a i think you get like free popcorn or something so that, because they have breaks in between the movies so you can go to the bathroom or whatever yeah but um if they don't have that this year and if you're not interested in watching that many movies in a row <laughs> i'm almost certain they're gonna re-release those movies within the next two months so that people can catch up rewatch yeah them. redo yeah. the buzz yeah and then some of them are just on uh, streaming. So, mm-hmm. but, I, think, I mean, I think between all of these, I don't, I don't know so which. What do you guys? Win. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Like, what I do mean, you guys think? I would love for Top Gun to win, but I know it's not gonna win. Yeah, I know for sure Avatar won't win. 
I, th- I think it's dude. If it wins, I, I might I might just call Rick. Like, but <laughs> I don't like why? Because it's a because they movie. used the two billion it won to pay for the award. Because it's definitely a like a a great movie from a technical standpoint, but story wise, like it's great. It's not fantastic. It's it's good. You know, it's, it it passes. But I just don't see it as best. Picture, I don't. Though. I'm I'm like okay. same. Like it should get all the technical awards, but I'm surprised. That's yeah, for, there over maybe like the Batman, but that's just somebody, me. Yeah, or or like there might have been another movie that they could have picked, um, that could have gone over. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe well no, way I've way. actually like I know you guys really liked it, but I've, I've heard, heard other people saying that like it's polar. Movie's right? okay, but his performance is amazing. So it's like one of those, or it's like maybe the movie's not so good, but the acting's amazing. I've heard like from critics saying that uh, it's mostly the the depiction of overweight people and. And they're like that because of depression, and that's how the movie depicts. I don't. Know, it's kind of like, some controversial stuff from the critics themselves, but I think the movie was fine. The mm-hmm. Movie was fine as it as it was, or how it was made. Mm-hmm. And I, I think yeah, that I would think deserve that over Avatar. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I think it's deeper than that. Yeah, I would put the whale. Like if I had to take out Avatar, yeah. movie, I would put the whale in because it's deeper it, than just a oh depression stuff. It's more. It's dealing with like sense of self and yeah. truth and. Having to live through that and being able to uh, kind of confront those things uh, yeah. and during extremely tough times. Because like, at the end of the day, it's a movie. It depicts fiction. I you wouldn't go there to say, "Oh, let's see how 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 they accurately portray obese people." You go there to watch a movie, a, an emotional movie, and the story and everything. Like it's just one example over thousands tens of thousands millions of people that are overweight and deal with us like it's it's kind of dumb but th- that's i think that's why it was kind of left out of the category because of polarizing uh views but it deserved to be in this over yeah, avatar I I see I, yeah i guess i'm not in, involved in that in, or seeing that discourse i don't necessarily see that but yeah. uh you know it's it's it still deals with various topics and issues and stuff that's beyond just the yeah. the, ob- the the morbidly obese kind of thing going on there's other deeper yeah. stuff beyond that yeah. and it's just you know it's it, it's awesome to see brendan fraser and even like darren aronofsky just kind of cultivate and take what was a play and put it into uh film form so yeah. you know um again like i think in the end i think uh the safe bet would be the fablemans because this <laughs> the, the, it's spielberg it's spielberg the topic and subject is it's just <laughs> really bless you, you. very feel good um and you have really strong performances in there um it's nominated for other points in there too if you want to go for like really drama like this was woof like it's kind of tough but also kind of like interesting to see would be probably banshees like that's my uh, my second pick that would be my second pick. I, would, I know yeah, it'll be Anthony's, Banshee. but that's why that's why we're different and yep. we have opinions. Uh, I'm kind of gonna go with what Danny said about all of this. That I enjoyed it. I liked it. He did a great job, but I don't know if I would put it in a. Mm-hmm. It should be part of best picture. So that's another one where I feel like maybe what, they could, no Elvis. Oh Elvis. They're like maybe yeah. Elvis. I don't could it have been there and they could have put something else. I don't, the thing is, I don't know what else. Like the whale. Uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> like, exactly. Maybe the whale, whale or, or living. Some, some of these like, other movies that are in, in other categories but not in Best Picture. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like you're saying, like Marcel Elvis, the Shell, obviously. Ooh, maybe. Yes. maybe. Should, instead been, of animated, should have been here. Yeah. Glass Onion, maybe. I really like Glass Onion. I liked it, but I don't know if it's Best Picture. I mean, but I feel like it's more best it's picture Ed- than Elvis. Yeah. Like it's Elvis Ed- and Ed- Avatar Ed- had their their strengths in in certain areas, uh-huh. but I just don't see it as an overall and best. And there's picture. glaring weaknesses, which I, I I definitely in Elvis I see the glaring weaknesses. I think I think based off of uh, acclaim, I would say that All Quiet, Banshees, Everything Everywhere, Fablemans, Top Gun might be. The solid choices. There have from. been Tar, plenty of there have been a few too. war movies that have won Best Picture, so mm. that might come out of nowhere, and that might just be the Best Picture. And it's also it wouldn't be the first foreign film to win Best Picture either. So yeah, I mean, I still have to watch it. I still have to watch it. Yeah, Roma. That's our homework. Roma for... won Best Picture uh, a few years back. Um, that was in Netflix. Right. Too. Yeah, 
No, Roma didn't win Best Picture. Are you nominated. sure? No, because sure? Roma no. would have been the first. It would have been the first streaming movie. movie it was. To win best well, picture. then I think he won Best Coda. Director. He won Best Coda. Director, I think. Okay, but, but it definitely won Best Foreign Film. It, it won, wow, for sure. Yeah, okay, okay. Because Coda was the first, first streaming movie. Streaming uh, yeah, it, it didn't win Best Picture, but okay. it did win Best Director. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, okay, that's what I remember. Um, but again, I've only seen five of these movies, so haven't seen Triangle of Sadness. Haven't seen Women Talking. I haven't seen Tar. Oh. And the um, but out of those three and Fablemans, I've heard more about Fablemans and Tar that there are like they are yeah. good movies. Yeah. Then I've heard about Women Talking Triangle of Sadness. So it's kind of like, yeah. My very personal pick would be Top Gun because like, it's not just the oh because it made a lot of money. It's like no, it made a lot of money because it's a very good movie. I mean, yeah. there's a reason. There's a reason why people, of times. not saw just me, five, there's, seven, there's a reason why people went to go see. Like they got out of their houses. Not me, like older people, like they apparently the age range of like the 40 and up crowd got out of their houses and said, I got to go watch this movie. And they went multiple times. Like I'm sure the that, older crowd, that's the generation that exactly. watched it when they were kids or teenagers. Right. But the thing is, it was that good that they went multiple times yeah. and, well, and they went and they went, uh, what do you call it? They um, like if it was kind of good, they would have gone once and be like, oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. But like for you to get. The younger crowd and the older crowd to go that many times and for it to make that much money, like I mean, all nobody, of us nobody combined watched it like well over twenty oh, times. It's, it's yeah. an awesome movie. And we're four people, so it's not just one of those like, oh, it's the popular movie, but it's not going. It's like, no, it's the popular movie, and, and it was like, movie. it was actually yeah. really good. It's yeah. good, but then it begins. It begs the thing of like, a, is it something of a standout thing for the medium and for the art? And that's where you have to have that kind of conversation. I'm just saying, if what I'm saying is like, if it somehow you know, wins, I would not be surprised. I mean, yeah. I and do, the thing is, I do, I don't, and the thing is, I don't think anybody there would be surprised because it got voted for a yeah. reason. Yeah, it's, it's there it's in there. a ten and list it for a reason. It stayed in theaters for months it, because people over just kept ha- over watching it. More than half a year, people just kept and going back and watch it. Forty X coming back. It's now coming it's back. Coming if back. somehow it's back in Forty X, you got you need where to is this thing? Go. Where is this thing you're watching? Go watch in Forty X because it's probably. The, the best, best movie to watch in 40 It'll ruin other movies. It for ruined you, for the it. media, that particular media right, for me. Right. I've said this before. It's you, If you're going to watch it in 40X, you need to if, watch it. If you're going to get poked in the back, <laughs> you might as well watch <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> All right. Speaking of poking in the back, we're uh, just about to start getting the uh, wrap it up music from the or- the <laughs> middle. Don't play me off. <laughs> we're about to beat you yeah, up. Yeah, be uh, be Michelle Yeoh and we're say about to you get can beat the off. musicians up. I'll beat you up for real. So, uh, I you know this is always this time of year comes around. It's always a fun discussion. We love talking about it and kind of seeing you know if what our tastes and what we see resonate with. Uh, those who are kind of in the industry and able to see through the nuances and the and you know and see if that translates to what really trans and you know what makes movies so magical and so much fun and it's always fun talking about this with you guys and uh, who knows hopefully we see some of our picks uh, make it uh, we won't know until what March seventeenth something like that is it seventeenth. 12, what, what day is the day? Oh, I don't know, but right we're forgetting the ultimate snub of any category. Oh, the ultimate snub, the of, ultimate any snub category? of any category? March 12th. March 12th. Um, Morbius. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's what the Razzies are for. No. With that, we'll sign off from here. Thank you for tuning in. Definitely reach out to us on our socials, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, and obviously, find wherever pod- you listen to your podcast. Obviously, how you're listening to this, but uh, reach out to us on some of your picks, what you think may be uh, other snubs that we might have missed. We snubbed the snubs, as we would like to say. But uh, we look forward to that. Uh, reach out, and uh, we'll pull out. We'll go ahead and uh, showcase some of those other ones and share it with the rest of the community. Thank you so much for tuning in again, and we'll catch you next time. See you. Watch some movies.